It's time for another podcast by George. Straight talk, straight from the heartland, that'll have you saying, by George, I think he's got it. Now, here's George. Hello, hi, how are you? And welcome to another podcast by George. Well, things are happening. We've got a great guest on the podcast today. Morgan Newman is joining us with her story that I know is going to be inspirational, uplifting, and and, it, and it, it's a story you know, that bears coverage. And I'm, and I'm, I'm just tickled to do that before we get to it though. I want to mention one quick thing here. I want to read this. The uh, climate crisis parade is coming up. It's a coalition of 37 organizations. They announced a major climate initiative. It'll be held a couple of days prior to the Iowa caucuses. So again, kind of good news, bad news. The bad news is I know everybody's sick to death of politics and the Iowa caucuses and all that, but the good news is it provides an excellent forum for this uh, climate crisis parade. Now it's gonna be held Saturday, February 1st at uh, straight up noon in downtown Des Moines. And just go to climate crisis parade, Google it, uh, check it out and, uh, uh, and be there. And it looks like hundreds, if not thousands of people are gonna be there because as you've heard me say many times on the podcast, including the, probably the podcast just before this, the climate crisis is looming large and it's going to get us all if we don't get it first. So come to the parade. I'll be there. I'll, I'll shoot some video and uh, some photos and stuff, and I'll put it up on Podcast by George. Okay, Morgan Newman is in the house. Morgs, how you doing? I'm good. How are you? I'm doing great. Uh, I wanted to share your story. I've been following along. It's a great one. Uh, I will tell people that it's at uh, Survivor uh, dot org is, uh, is the place to find you. And um, it starts off, of course, talking about a cancerversary, uh, which is a, a, an interesting terminology. And survivor, by the way, is spelled C-E-R-V-I-V-O-R, -V -V -O survivor. So get us started. My actual story started um, in 2015. It was February 4th, and it happened to be World Cancer Day. But I was diagnosed with uh, cervical cancer at the age of 24. And then, um, you know, I went through some treatment and um, I had to go through it again. So I had a metastatic recurrence happen and I was diagnosed again February uh, 15th of 2016. Uh, how did that hit you? I mean, uh, what's that news like? I've heard a lot of, you know, I do a podcast every week for Above and Beyond Cancer org, And one thing those folks always share is, the day, the, the time that they got that diagnosis. Definitely. Yeah. It's, it's something that you'll never forget completely ingrained into your memory. Um, I, I went by myself to the oncology appointment. Um, I, I didn't, I didn't know what an oncologist was really. I was in denial. I was young. Nothing was wrong with me, you know, so I ended up going and, and um, my kind of cancer was, you know, cervical cancer. So I had to have a pap test or a, a pelvic exam. And um, afterwards, he, the, the oncologist told me to uh, get dressed and then meet him in the conference room where him and the nurse practitioner told me that I had cancer. So I was sitting there. I was in shock. Um, you know, highly emotional, crying and, and, you know, had a box of Kleenex in front of me, but um, he was trying to go on and give me more information um, about the cancer. And it, it sounded like the Charlie Brown voice, the, that want, want, want noise. Yeah. You know, you just kind of blur out everything else. And how important was it that you were, uh, that n not only that you got regular checkups, but that you were able to get regular checkups? Right. I've been very fortunate because, uh, you know, I came from a rural community, a small town in, in Southwest Iowa. And, um, you know, I've always gone to Planned Parenthood because they, they provided, uh, you know, the privacy, the, the all-inclusive care. Um, including STD testing and, and all that. Um, but I, I've been very fortunate in that in where some people haven't been. But I've always gone um, every year since I was uh, a 
teenager to get my well women exams to make sure nothing serious happened. And um, it still happened. I mean, would it be an overstatement to say it's the reason you're alive today? Oh, it, that's definitely, definitely not an overstatement. I, I'm very grateful for that organization and what they've done for me. Um, you know, I was, I was fortunate that uh, the PAP test was due on that year. Otherwise, I wouldn't be here. Well, uh, tell us about then uh, sharing the information, letting other people know. I mean, how do you go about that? What was that experience like? Uh, so I, I uh, walked out of those medical doors. Um, I was actually walking through the skywalk at, to the parking garage, and I picked up my phone and started calling my, call my dad first. And um, you know, you could just hear his voice crack and and the disappointment of of not having someone with me at my appointment. Um, he he and I talked and, and he promised me that I would never go to another appointment by myself from that, that day forward. Um, called my mom at work, which I really hated to do. Um, but it, to me, that was an emergency. Um, and then I, I called my sister. Uh, my sister's 10 years older than me. So she had a really hard time because she, she's always felt like she needed to take care of me. And then, um, I had to call my boss at the time to let her know that I wasn't coming back to work. And that uh, kind of hit everyone in that atmosphere of like, okay, what are we supposed to do moving forward? Because there's so many unknowns from that point. What do we do? What's the plan? And I didn't have any of those answers yet. Well, as a young woman, did you know much about this type of cancer? I mean, I, I've heard of it. I'd be real truthful with you. I don't know a lot about it. What did you learn about it? I didn't. So I, I started reading on the internet, which is like good and bad because, you know, you start getting in your head about all these things, but then you see it's linked to, um, a lot of it mentions sexual contact. So immediately I started feeling shame that it was my fault that i that I got this cancer. Um, I, I didn't know what HPV was, um, the, the human papilloma virus. Uh, I had heard of Gardasil, you know, a vaccine that prevents uh, cervical cancer, but I didn't know much about it. I knew um, some of my friends had gone and had their well woman exams and had pap tests that came back abnormal. Uh, this was the first time for me to experience something like that, and I had cancer. So I thought I was fine when they, you know, sent me a letter stating, hey, you have an abnormal pap, you need to come back in for more testing, which is a, a colposcopy. And that's not really the most comfortable thing to go through either. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I, I, there, there was so much that I didn't know. and. To be honest, um, I didn't really know where my cervix was. I didn't really know a whole lot about it. So, and I'm, I'm wholeheartedly okay with admitting that now. Well, you became informed, obviously. You're in, at that point involved in a life and death struggle. And so treatments begin. Yes. Yep. So I went through... Um, five weeks of chemo and six weeks of external radiation, um, you know, dealt with nausea and exhaustion basically for that. Um, I was on a really low dose chemotherapy at that time. And then um, after external radiation was done, they did a, a procedure called internal radiation um, where they placed the plastic sleeve surgically in that area. And then I would go in and um, spend the night after receiving one dose of radiation. So that plastic sleeve directed the um, radiation directly at the tumor. Um, and I had four of those treatments done, and that's definitely an experience that I would try to prevent anyone else having to go through because um, it, it was one of those moments that I... I could sense uh, work 
compassion fatigue for the people who were taking care of me. And I don't know, I've told this story a couple times just to make, and it's when I was talking to a group of nurses to make them aware that what they do every day is important and how they communicate with their patients is important. So during one of the, the treatments, um, it would have been that first week that I had two done, uh, they were getting ready to remove the three-part tungsten and ring um, components that they had placed while I was under. And um, it holds vital organs out of the way of the radiation beam. So um, I was supposed to have pain meds and the oncologist forgot to order them. And oh. yeah, I'm like, um, I kind of want those. And uh, the, the nurse asked me if I had children and said no. And um, she proceeded to say, well, this is going to feel a lot like childbirth. So without, they, without pain medication. With, without the pain meds. So they started taking out the, the tungsten and ring um, components, and there was just so much pressure. Um, it's an experience that I'll never forget. And it, it created a little PTSD um, for, for me for uh, a couple of years at least. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. So that was, it, it's an experience that you don't want to do, but the, the twist of that is, you know, this cancer is stripping me of my fertility as is. And now that was the closest thing I had to childbirth. How I, how ironic. Well, the, um, so you, you're going through these treatments. They're very invasive. It sounds like, uh, I mean, you're getting the full regimen. It couldn't be uh, any worse, really. Uh, oftentimes, they'll start doing scans and see some positive effect. Was that the case with you? They'll see some remission. But then, of course, the great fear with everyone is, is it going away? Is it going to stay away? Is it going to come back? Right. So they, they put, everyone's different, but... Um, my oncologist recommended scanning every three months after treatment was done. So the first one went really, really great, you know, came back in, in August of that year and no, no evidence of disease. So you'll, you'll hear um, cancer patients call it NED, which is remission. Um, and then I went back for another three month scan and they found um, some nodules in my lungs and they were trying to rule out a fungus that most Midwesterners get. Um, and, you know, usually that fungus is pretty harmless. But I had to go undergo uh, more testing. So I went in for a CT um, needle guided biopsy. And um, basically was put through the ringer on that. I had a bad experience where my lung collapsed and... Um, it, the, the specimen that they got was contaminated. So, you know, things happen. Oh my God. I mean, that's terrifying because I don't have to tell you the, the great fear is, is that this isn't localized, that it's uh, spread uh, around your body and they find these nodules in your lung and they're thinking maybe it's a fungus or something, which is an extremely rare long shot type of a thing. You had to be really right. scared at that point. I mean, really scared. I, I was terrified. So I, I went back and I had to have a scope down my throat and they were trying to get it that way. Um, and they were successful in that. So I was, I was grateful that they got what they needed. I didn't have to undergo surgery for, for it. Um, but then I, I took a little vacation with my boyfriend at the time and our roommates. And um, we went down to New Orleans for Mardi Gras and just had a really good time. And um came back and that that following week I found out that it was the same uh, cervical cancer cells that I was originally diagnosed they had metastasized so um, it meant treatment again so definitely a feeling um, you know my, my dad and I are sitting there in the exam room waiting for the infectious disease doctor to come in to give us the results and we're just bantering back and forth with these awkward, you can feel this awkwardness of we're both terrified. 
And um, the doc comes in and his eyes start away from me just as quickly. And I knew right then that I was going to be facing cancer again. My God. And you're uh, at such a young person. I, you, like you say, not only you would think that you're bulletproof, but old gummers like me would think, my God, you're I mean, number one, you're not going to have something like this. Number two, if you do that, you'll overcome it quickly and easily because of your youth, but there was nothing quick or easy a, a, about this. Uh, wow. Okay. Get us caught up here. Kind of fast forward a little bit and, and, and tell us what happened then. Um, so I decided to have a second opinion and I went up to the Mayo Clinic in Rochester, um, started treatment right away. And, um, this treatment was a, a three-part uh, heavier dose drug. Um, they they call it the cisplatin cocktail. Um, no radiation this time because it would have been too toxic. But after just three treatments, I was considered um, no evidence of disease, which brings in the June two thousand sixteen date. Um, I still had to I, I still had to go through three more treatments because six is the standard and they want to make sure they get every little cell possible in that body. But, um, that was the most intense treatment that I felt, um, for cancer. And, um, my body went through a lot. I went through neutropenia and had to have extra medication to help boost my, my numbers back up in order to receive those next doses. So it just really brought me, brought my whole body down and, and really kind of kicked me while I was there. My God. Well, the other thing that always comes to mind and it shouldn't, and maybe someday it won't in this country, but uh, it's what everybody's talking about right now, health insurance, mm -hmm. medical costs. I mean, uh, so many people uh, literally, uh, number one cause of bankruptcy, I think are these healthcare expenses. Uh, were you covered? Were you all right financially on this? I, I was. I was very fortunate. Um, I was on my mom's insurance. I was still under 26. Oh. Um, so I, I've been very fortunate in that. I have had some medical costs that um, our music community in Des Moines did a really, really fantastic job of helping me when I needed it the most. Um, Brother Trucker was there for me when I needed them. Um, they put on a couple benefits. You got to love brother trucker. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah. that's how Morgs and I got caught up. I actually is uh, attending some of these live music events. Well, okay. So, um, yeah, it looks like they get the last of this, but cancer survivors always talk about being in, in remission. It's, it's folly to say that you're cured. I mean, there's right. no permanent cure with this type of thing. You're, you got to keep tabs on it. It's, it's always a, potential flare up, right? Yeah. So I, I have a metas I have metastatic disease, which essentially there's no cure for, um, you can put it into remission and it may never come back. But the reality is, um, I could be diagnosed anytime again. And the, the statistics that my oncologist shared with me for my specific situation only seven to nine percent of women have a complete interval response. Meanwhile, I'm—I mean, that's a very low percentage. Um, meanwhile, other women are maintaining this disease, and it's preventable um, for the rest of their lives, however long that is, or they're—they're they're dying right away from this cancer. So, it's a real eye opener. Well, you didn't just uh, sit on your laurels either. I mean, as soon as you were able to, you started. Uh letting people know about what was happening and you're uh, working today still trying to keep people informed and to sound the alarm on this really insidious disease. Uh, tell us how you're doing today and tell, tell us what you're doing along those lines. Absolutely. So I am, um, I'll be five years out since my initial diagnosis and um, working on year four of remission. I'm, I'm in fairly good health. I've been dealing with side effects that I don't I, I've learned how to um, manage, I guess. Um, but I, I volunteer tremendously with um, Survivor, the American Cancer, excuse me, the American Cancer Society Action Network, Above and Beyond Cancer, 
um, Bras for the Cause, Madison County chapter. Um, I mean, the list goes on and on. I try and get involved with as much as possible because um, people just don't know. And um, educating and, and spreading this awareness has helped me heal a lot more. Um, I, I don't know how else to explain it. Just the fact that I feel like I have a sense of purpose and I'm here for a reason, um, whatever that may be, but I think this might be it. <laughs> I think so too. And you're doing a great job at it. And I'm sorry to hear about the side effects. Now, everybody's different. Statistics mean something when it comes to these cancer stories. But like I said, everybody is different. Is there a reason to believe that you'll be free of all side effects and be uh, completely healthy and and uh, back to a normal person for your age? No, uh, <laughs> no, unfortunately, I, I, I hate to laugh at that. I'm sorry. Uh, I laughed at that, but I, I have uh, lymphedema, which is an incurable um, condition. So I, I swell in my, my lower extremities um, and it's a heaviness and, and can be painful. Um, the, the radiation damage done to my GI tract um, has caused so much, so many issues. Now they have improved because there are things you can do, dietary and and whatnot. But um, yeah, there's just some things that can't be taken back. And and as much as I want to be the the old me, it'll never that'll never happen. I this is a trauma, and it changes everyone. Um, Sometimes, sometimes it's a blessing. Sometimes it's not. And I, I say that because um, one of our favorite quotes from Survivor School is, uh, "Cancer is cancer is a gift wrapped in barbed wire." It, it, so it it's, teaches it, you a, a gift wrapped in barbed wire. Yes. So you, you don't want it, but it teaches you what you really truly want in life, and it it pushes you. Um, to do something with it. Well, that's great. And I really like that analogy and particularly for this podcast originating from the heartland as I promote it, we all know what barbed wire is. There are people in, you know, some parts of the country maybe that aren't aware of what that is, but that that's outstanding. Morgs. And I, here's the thing that I would say folks, I mean, the, the uh, young lady that's involved in this life and death struggle, this battle, uh, couldn't be more tough. I good on you, Morgs. You're a brave soul. You know, I like to, I like to think of myself as a tough old cob and tell my stories of my youth <laughs> and the little battles and dust ups that I went through. And you know, I play men's league hockey, and I get my God, all that crap pales in comparison to this struggle that you're involved in each and every day. Now, before we leave, um, tell people how they can follow along, how they can check with you, how they can check with this organization, how they can check themselves. Any advice that you have here before we end the podcast? Well, we ha we are on like all social media platforms. So you can find most of our, our stuff is I am survivor or um, survivor.org is a, is a great website. Uh, there's plenty of, of uh, facts. There's plenty of resources available on that website. Um, just make sure if, if you feel like something's off, advocate for yourself. Right? That's the best advice that I can give anyone. Um, your health is, is yours and it's, it's the only chance you have. So make it worth it. <laughs> My God, that's well said. That's a, the last word for this podcast. That makes an old man weepy, Morgan. Uh, uh, the best to you. Take care, kiddo. And um, we'll check back in. We'll see how this is progressing, how this is moving along for you here. The podcast is just a little bit over a year old now, and I could see us uh, coming back here in a few months and, and just checking in again. Would that be all right? Of course. I appreciate you giving me this opportunity. Well, that's great. We'll put some links on the, on the website and on Facebook and some other things so folks can check in just like you mentioned. And uh, uh, I, I really, <laughs> sometimes, sometimes I'm way too wordy, but I, I don't have a lot today. I mean, that, that's going to wrap up our podcast, folks. We'll be back again with you very soon. Um, for right now, though, that's going to do it. That's another podcast by George. <laughs>